congregation please stand. Please be seated. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome here in the house of the Lord this morning. You know, uh, I thought it would be uh, very cold this morning, but it's not too cold, and we we will try to keep on uh, encouraging people to come in earlier. This morning is already better. <laughs> But uh, thank you for coming. We, uh, we never thought that uh, the epidemic will touch you easily. And now in our congregation, we had now two people who passed away because of the co uh, coronavirus. And now some of my friends, and it's a young woman, she and her husband both landed up in, uh, in uh, uh, ICU. And, but uh, he's much better, but she's still struggling. And at the moment, it's uh, a, a very, very bad, uh, She's uh, on a ventilator and they can't get her uh, oxygen level up. So I want to ask you that need, we need to pray more for our congregation, for our friends, for our community. And also, I know that we sometimes uh, neglect praying for one another but this morning I want to ask you that during this the service and also wherever we go that we start looking uh, and listening and praying for one another our call to worship this morning is again that I read Psalm 1 Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water which yields its fruits in season and whose leaf does not wither whatever he does prospers not to the wicked they are like half that the wind blows away therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous for the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. That is such lovely words that we read. And for that also, I bring to you this morning grace, mercy and peace from God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son. And working with the Holy Spirit. Let us stand and sing our first song, The King of Love. Love. 
You promised us your Holy Spirit. We thank you that during this week we could experience in every day and every moment that you are close with us, that you love us in so many ways.
wish they were love on us, but we don't understand every day. But thank you, God, Lord, for loving us. You guide us this morning in this service and take control of this service, Lord. And give that we will focus on you and not on what we experienced outside. Lead us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us sing our next song above all powers. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things. Above all
Thank you, Lord, that you think of us first. You are the only one who guide us. Lord, as we open a, a word now, your word, that you give us, open our hearts and our minds that we will listen to your word. We thank you, Lord, for leading us. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading this morning is from Acts 1. Acts 1, verse 15 to 26. Good morning. Acts 1, verse 15 to 26. 26. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled with the Holy Spirit, spoke a long ago through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who saved and guided for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in his ministry. With the reward he got for his wickedness, Judas bought a field there, he fell headlong. His body burst open and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this. So they called that field in their language, Agaldama, that is field of blood. For, said Peter, it was written in the book of Psalms, May his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Beginning from John baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us, for one of these must become a witness with us for of his resurrection. So they proposed two men, Joseph called Basabas, also known as Ju Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed, the Lord you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry. We just Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they drew lots, and the lot fell to Matthias, so he was added to the eleven apostles. Amen. Thank you. The Lord bless the, the reading of his word. One John four, we read, "No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love has been perfected in us. By this, we know that we are we abide in Him, and He in us, because." He has given us of His Spirit. Sorry. Let 
The church is often described in the New Testament using different descriptive images. It is sometimes described in the New Testament <coughs> and, uh, described as a family and other times as a kingdom. The only way to become a member of this family of God as father is to become as God as father is to become to be born from above by the Holy Spirit. Let me read it again. The only way to become a member of this family with God as Father is to be born from above by the Holy Spirit. This new birth qualifies a person to become a citizen of the kingdom of God. In this kingdom, the king and ruler is Jesus Christ. It demands obedience from all citizens as they carry out the various duties assigned to them. From these two descriptions, and there is a lot more images of the church, we can see that the church is not a physical building. This building is not the church, and wood and stone, but the building of God's composed of God composed of believers who are descri described as living stone. So who is the church? We are the church. When we went, when we used to went on, on Kairos in, in the prisons, and after that first day, you ask the, the inmates there, who is the church? And you hear that choir sing, we are the church, <laughs> you know? And by Sunday, they walk tall and they, you know that these people, they knew Jesus. Jesus was there already, but they were reminded that they can't go through this time in prison if they don't walk with Jesus. And they must realize that they are the church, the church that Jesus Christ called them to. It is the Holy Spirit who makes believers living stones and without the Holy Spirit there can be no church. The church without the Holy Spirit is like a torch without a battery. And if there is no co electricity connection there is no source of power. You can have the most expensive and beautiful church, but with, without the Holy Spirit, it is of no use. Without the Holy Spirit as the soul of the church, we cannot do anything that pleases Christ. The Holy Spirit is the precious gift of God. To every believer, the moment he or she receives Jesus as a Savior and Lord. As, as the Spirit of grace, he is far too gracious to impose himself, impose himself 
on the believer or force himself into an, any area of our personality where he is not welcome. Yes, we know he knock on the door. But to open that door must come from the inside, from the outside. He won't force that door open. He's there for us. The body of a child of God becomes the temple for the Holy Spirit who is the evidence of God's seal of ownership on our lives. He testifies that we not, no longer belong to ourselves but that our lives has been given to God. This means that anyone contented, contending with us is actually contending with God. The Christian life is a supernatural life. It is Christ who lives in every believer by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, when the Jews built the tabernacle <coughs> in the wilderness, God gave them very explicit instructions through Moses how to build this tabernacle. The book of Exodus, we can read a great detail how the tabernacle was to be built. God Himself determined its length, its width, and its height. Everything was very detailed. When they built the temple, God once again gave all the instructions to David. When Solomon built the temple, his workmen followed the plans so carefully, so carefully that everything fitted there together perfectly on the construction site. There was no need to make anything on the construction site. People, I was at the Western Wall in 2010 and I've seen some of those rocks. Well, I'm telling you, some of those rocks can easily be from here to the end of the, the church. And it's this height and they didn't chisel those rocks there. It has been done far away from the temple. Because it was a holy site. It's unbelievable. They're talking about the, the rocks in the, in the pyramids. I haven't seen such big rocks in the pyramids. I've walked around there also. And I haven't seen it. But it show you. If we do something for God, many believers are not enjoying Christ's new life because they have refused to follow God's blueprint for their lives. Building a life according to God, God's blueprint, is only the only way to the supernatural life. Remember one thing, Jesus was supernaturally conceived. His resurrection was supernatural. According to God's blueprint, we are to give up living in the flesh if we really, if we really want to experience the fullness of God. 
God's Spirit assures us that He will complete what He has begun in our lives. He don't leave anything half done. He complete everything in His life. We have ever need to cooperate with God by daily studying and meditating on God's word and obeying His commandments. The Holy Spirit is the voice of God to the church. His focus is only on God. And when he speaks, he reveals the wisdom of God. He is the one who enables us to live according to God's revealed will. The Christian life demands relying on God for each step we take. Here's a little song that says, Each step I take is a step by, through God. Each step, each step in faith. Each step that we take needs to be a step in faith. It demands praying according to His will, so that what God has ruled takes place. Judas, who betrayed Jesus, was with him daily. He received the same calling and teaching as the rest of the disciples. But he chose to reject Jesus. He want his ways. Jesus offers him mercy, but he rejected. Judas was privileged to be close to the truth, but he was not committed to him. After his death, the apostles had to choose a replacement for him, and they showed their commitment to Christ by relying on on the Holy Spirit. They set, they set up a criteria consistent with the Word of God. Prayed and asked God to guide the election process, leaving us an example on how to proceed when making important decisions. Now many times that we make a decision in the church and it didn't work out. How many times did people, ministers come and preach in a congregation and everybody is in excitement that this minister must come to this. But they never went and asked the Lord if this person is what the Lord wanted. They are so excited. It happened. And it happened in this congregation also. We continue to need the Holy Spirit if we are to grow to spiritual maturity. An evidence of spiritual growth is the frequency of prayer as it is the Holy Spirit who direct our prayers and through prayer transforms our lives. It is only by the leading of the Holy Spirit that we know what Christ wants. There's no other way. If we come to ourselves and we want our way, 
it only went one way and that's disaster unfortunately we often seek from the world those things that can only be given by God indeed he has given us the very best yet at times we settle for far lesser substitutes isn't that true he offered us the best and then we say no I don't know I can't go for that and we think by just walking along can be the best as we rely on the Holy Spirit we will fill us he will fill us with more of what is real and lasting than what we can ever obtain elsewhere nobody else can give us what the Holy Spirit can give the Holy Spirit reveals and manifests the life of Christ in the church it is a life dedicated by the love of God if God so loved the world that he gave his only son for us and then he said to us but you must love one another and not we are not willing to do it we are not willing to love one another we don't forgive we want to bring up old things didn't Jesus say that if we love one another the world will see we are his disciples it's easy to say you're a disciple of Jesus but you must show it you must show that you are a disciple of Christ the expression of Christ is a, in us is seen when we love the way Christ loved and the manifestation of his love will always draw others to Christ Christ's will God's will is to do it through his church the Holy Spirit enables us to impact the lives of sinners through our love the word and prayer how do we live how we do we walk each day with our Lord the effectiveness of our efforts depends on the level of our relationship with him not how much we know about him how much are we going to church how much are we giving to the church but what is our relationship with him and imitate relationship will make one desire to glorify the name of Christ by exalting his name the Holy Spirit not only leads us to Christ but also deepens our relationship with him it is this imitate relationship that allows him to work in us and through us to reach the world with the message of salvation as we manifest his nature and character 
Prayer is the heartbeat of the Christian life. And it is therefore not surprising that Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer. And John 17 presents a blueprint of God's program for this age. Jesus expects his people to be a body, a church, the body of Christ that would last throughout the ages and make a great impact on the world. But if this body is each one running this way and that way and that way, how can it make an impact on the world? If this body don't pray together, how can it make an impact on the world? And my friends, I experienced it that only one person, churches can come together and pray together and they can, <coughs> they can even join in, 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 in worshiping together. But only one person make a remark about this church or that church or this is not what he want from the church only one person and it can break it up I'm not an ordained minister but I joined in and I want to be part of the body of Christ not only in this church but in the community and we were a lovely group together not only a social group not a social group but a group who prayed together and we knew about everyone problem in in uh, in different churches and we prayed for one another with pastors and ministers and one come and he is not happy about it because he never took part in it he never prayed with the others he only came once and then he wasn't happy and then one pastor was removed and the whole body fell flat. To enable the church to accomplish its purpose, Jesus prayed that God would unite and keep his chosen people, his disciples, safe from Satan's power setting them apart and keeping them pure and holy. That is one thing we need to do for one another. Pray that we are all being kept, keeping safe away from Satan. Satan will always try. We see in the world, look how People are fighting each other in the world. And it's Satan that think he can control the world. And he tries his best. Before you take, you make a decision to, to join in and judging people rather praying for the, those people Jesus knew that their success depended on the Holy Spirit and not on their abilities of methods too often the world cannot understand the gospel message and who is Jesus because his followers confused him 
instead of praying together we take taking sides it is only the Holy Spirit that will enable us to keep the truth and life before a doubting world in a way that glorifies his name his children must stop slandering his name by our sinful ways and divisions in the church as Jesus Christ lived and worked in complete union with the Father, we also need to live and work in complete union and relevance, reliance on the Holy Spirit. No one, no one has any claim to ownership in the church. It is the church of Christ. The Holy Spirit is responsible for our faith in Jesus Christ. He also is <coughs> he's also responsible for keeping that faith alive and allowing us to live for Christ. The Holy Spirit leads us to obey God by reminding us of his faithful promises so many promises in this book and we can rely on it because it comes from God it doesn't come from anybody else nobody else can make a promise and rely, you can rely on it like you can rely on the, the promises in the Bible the Spirit constantly reminds us that we have a faithful God. We have a faithful God who loves us so much that He died for our sins and rose again so that we might live with Him eternally. He constantly reminds us that all good things come from God our ability to think is a gift our memory is a gift our daily work and daily bread is a gift and our friends and relatives are gifts from God any talent any good that is in us is a gift from God as God's children we need to love the way Christ loved some years ago at the special Olympics nine contestants all physically and mentally disabled assembled at the starting line for the 100 meter race and at the, the gun they all started to run towards the finishing line hoping to win the race one boy however stumbled and fell and began to cry the other eight contestants slowly slowed down and looked back as they heard the boy cry they all turn around and they go and help this boy the result was they all came hugging in with each other and they walked Across the finishing line. These disabled children demonstrated that what mattered in life was more than winning for themselves. 
It was showing love, compassion, and care for one another. Love, compassion, and care for one another. The Holy Spirit, the soul of the church, empowers us to live a life that is filled with love, filled with compassion, and filled with care. The Holy Spirit can change us to become what God wants us to be. A people who demonstrate the life and the character of Jesus Christ. My family, this morning I ask you again. Let us make an impact on this community, on the world, as the Church of Christ. By allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us into fulfilling God's divine purpose. Let us make an impact. We can, although we're only a few, we can make an impact. If we start with us, with ourselves. Jesus, we feel so humble. If we don't do what you expect us to do, lead us, uplift us, and guide us each and every moment of each day. Give that we will walk close to you, and that people will see we are your disciples, because we love one another. In spite of all our different political <coughs> and, and religious ways, but that you are the one that we love, because you loved us first. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let us continue our worship with our praise and our tithes and offerings. Thank you, Lord, for these our offerings that we can bring back to you. We thank you, Lord, for guiding us. Give us the strength and the courage 
and the wisdom to use these offerings to the extension of your kingdom. Guide us, Lord, and forgive us all our sins. In Jesus' name. If there is anybody who would like to pray for anybody, I'm going to give it some time that we can pray for one another. For the next couple of minutes, you will have silence. If you feel you want to pray, you can pray in your own language, but the language that's easy on your tongue. We stand in awe before you this morning, Lord. We receive so many blessings that you bestow unto us. We know that you love us. You guide us and you protect us. <coughs> so many times do we neglect to pray for our local government our church, our provincial governments, and our government, we need to govern this country. Although maybe the majority might think they can do it themselves. We thank you for those of our government, of people who present the people of South Africa. We thank for those who know that you are our leader. We go through the world, we see that so many people are fighting each other. Because each one don't love another. And Jesus ask you to lead each one of us closer to you also that we not only praying for ourselves but that we will pray 
for the other people in the world. So many people die of this coronavirus. But also, Lord, how many other people are dying of other sicknesses? And we forget about that. We forget about the fact that all the sicknesses together is not as much as the murders that's taking place and abortions all over the world. Lord, heal our world. Touch each and every one of us to know that you are God. You are the great I am. In control of the whole world. We pray that you will stir our lives our minds that you will open them and that we will give you glory in all things we are doing and we thank you for the prayer that Jesus taught us here O Lord our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us close with our closing hymn.
place will receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. Sunday, it's Pentecost Sunday.